The heart is the organ that has this extremely important job of pumping the blood throughout the blood vessels. The heart sits in the center of the chest and it points a little bit to the left. And internally, inside of the heart, there are four key chambers, four chambers that blood travels through. So let's take a look at those chambers. The four chambers of the heart, uh, so there are two upper chambers and there are two lower chambers. The upper chambers are called atria. Right here is the right atrium and right over here is the left atrium. And then the lower chambers are called ventricles. This is the right ventricle. Right here is the left ventricle. And notice with the right versus left, so it, it, first it seems like I'm saying those backwards. Okay, this is the right side of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. Um, the naming for right and left is, um, it, it's as if we're talking about right and left of the person that we're looking at. Okay, so if this is a patient, if we're looking in the patient's heart, the patient is going to be laying down. Um, this is the patient's left, and this is the patient's right. Okay, so the upper chambers are called atria. Atrium is singular, atria is plural. Uh, the right atrium, this is the chamber that receives blood from the body. So blood that has been used, the oxygen has been consumed from it, um, it's got waste products in it. That blood is going to be dumped into the right atrium. It's carried through two two major vessels. So right down here, this blue one, this is called the inferior vena cava. This one up here is called the superior vena cava. So inferior and superior, that's just referring to position relative to the heart. And okay, so this is a, a vein. It's carrying blood um, into the right atrium. This one carries blood from the upper half of the body, like above the heart. And this one carries blood from the lower half of the body. Okay, so in either case, the blood empties into that right atrium. We're going to walk through the, the pathway a little bit later on, so I won't do that right now. Um, for now, let's just get the overall layout. So notice there are also some valves. There are valves that separate the atria from the ventricles, and we'll talk about those valves in just a minute. Um, so in addition to having muscle, right, the heart is made of cardiac muscle tissue, um, the heart also has kind of like a fibrous skeleton, and that skeleton provides some separation between these different chambers. Um, the skeleton also helps to hold the valves in place. So this fibrous skeleton, it's got a lot of connective tissue um, just to help sort of organize things. The whole heart, the entire organ, is surrounded by um, what's called a pericardium. The pericardium is essentially it's just a sac that surrounds the heart and it's filled with fluid. So that helps to maintain um, this organ correctly. So as the blood flows through the heart, there are two major circuits that blood will take. Um, so blood that comes in from, from the body, it's blood that's been quote unquote used. You know, the oxygen has been used up from it. Um, that blood needs to get sent off to the lungs to become oxygenated. So what we have is two different circuits. One is called the pulmonary circuit. This is between the heart and the lungs. And this is where um, blood can get sent out to the lungs to become oxygenated and to lose carbon dioxide waste. And then it comes back to the heart. And then after that, the blood will enter into the systemic circuit. And the systemic circuit is, um, includes like all of the body tissues, so the blood that is oxygenated will get sent out to the body, and that oxygen can be used, wastes can be picked up, and then that blood will come back to the heart. So two different major pathways, and we'll need to know both of these pathways, both of these circuits. Um, okay, so before we jump into that circuit, walking through that circuit, Let's talk about valves a little bit more. So the four major chambers of the heart are separated by valves, and those valves help to prevent backflow of blood. So um, separating the atria from the ventricles, we have what are called atrioventricular valves. It makes sense to call them that. Those are the two chambers that they are separating, atrioventricular valves, or AV valves for short. So we'll be referring to like the right AV valve and the left AV valve. Um, however, 
those valves also have some other names. Okay, the right AV valve is also called the tricuspid valve. And the reason for that is because of how it looks. If we take a cross section um, through the heart right, right above those valves, here's what we would see. This tricuspid valve, it has three sections to it. So that's why it's called tricuspid. This other one only has two sections. So it's called a bicuspid valve. So again, the, um, the left atrioventricular valve, we could equally uh, correctly refer to it as the bicuspid valve. Those valves are held in place. There are these sort of cords. If you've ever dissected like a sheep heart, um, you'll have seen these sort of, it almost looks like little tiny tendons, uh, connective tissue that, that helps to hold the valves in place. This helps to keep them from everting, going in the wrong direction. Um, so those are cordy tendony is the name for those, along with papillary muscles. The other type of valve that the heart has, let's just look at the picture down here. So for instance, um, right there, we have something called a pulmonary valve. It's labeled right here. This is an example of a semilunar valve. Semilunar valve. These are what separate the ventricles um, from the arteries. So the blood is going to leave from a ventricle. It's going to head out into an artery. And there's a separation. Um, a semilunar valve is what separates those two things from each other. So again, all of these valves, these are helping to prevent backflow, keep the blood from going the wrong direction. And sometimes valves don't work quite the way they're supposed to. And if that happens, we can hear it as a heart murmur. Um, so ordinarily, a normal healthy heart, when we listen, we hear the lub dub, lub dub. What those sounds are, refer are um, what those sounds are, are just the sounds that the valves make when the valves close. So if those valves are not closing correctly or not completely, um, then we will hear a heart murmur when we listen to the heart. Okay, the path of blood through the heart. You'll need to know the path that blood takes through the heart. This is, um, this is important. This is something to spend some time with. Get this pathway down. Okay, we'll walk through it together, and then you can pause and practice on your own. So um, let's start with where blood first enters the heart. So blood has been out in circulation in the body, um, the oxygen has been used up, so it's deoxygenated blood, and it is going to enter into the right atrium. It enters through the vena cava, the inferior and superior vena cava. We already talked about those. So blood comes into this right atrium. Next, it's going to go through this right AV valve into uh, the right ventricle. The right ventricle is going to send the blood to the lungs, is where it's going to head. To get there, it has to go through the pulmonary valve. So blood comes from the right ventricle up through this pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk, and then it would split in two directions. Some of it will go this way, some of it will go this way, um, off to the, to the lungs, right? Right and left lungs. After it's been in the lungs, it will be oxygenated blood. And so now I'm gonna to switch to red text just to represent that it is oxygenated. Um, that oxygenated blood is going to come back from the lungs and it will re-enter the heart in the left atrium. So right here, this left atrium. Okay, see so we've got these four vessels sticking out. Um, those are the blood vessels that carry blood from the lungs back to the heart. So once it's in that left, atri left atrium, once it's in the left atrium, it will pass through the bicuspid valve or the left atrioventricular valve down into the left ventricle. The left ventricle, notice how thick these walls are. This is a very muscular chamber of the heart. This is the chamber that when it contracts, it's going to squeeze the blood up into the aorta and that blood is gonna go out into, the cir into circulation through, through the whole body. Um, so this has to be a very strong chamber, the left ventricle. It's got these thick walls for a reason. It needs to give a good strong pump to this blood to get it out to the whole body. Okay, so from there, <clears throat> that blood will leave the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve, which is kind of hidden on this picture, um, but it will go from the left ventricle out the aortic semilunar valve, and here's the aorta. Okay, so blood's gonna flow upwards through here. The aorta is gonna branch out um, all over the place, 
and transport the blood through the body.